Hi, welcome to Nichecraft. My name is Cassie and I'm your host. And today we are going to be learning this beautiful stitch, which is what I call the fall foliage stitch. And as I zoom out here, you're going to be able to see a scarf that I'm making using this stitch, which is absolutely stunning. It, it um, works up very thickly, um, which makes it very nice for a warm scarf or blanket. Um, or a warm sweater if you want to make something like that with it is a one row repeat after making the the two foundation rows okay this is a yarn eater so you do have to kind of keep that in mind you'll notice that I don't color block my work in this particular um, case and that's just my style um, I understand totally if you'd like to color block yours now if you want to make yours exactly like mine then what you're gonna need is um, this willow yarns wheels okay i call them willow wheels um, they're 4.9 ounces 139 grams and they provide 377 yarns okay the color that you'll be getting that in is foliage and that's why i call this the fall foliage scarf um and this is a very lightweight three i don't think that it even says that it's a light, it, it doesn't even say the weight on it. Oh, there it is, it's three, right there. So yeah, this is a, this was, this is a weight three. Um, and the hook that I found that works best for that is either a G hook, which is a four millimeter, or what I've done is I'm, I'm using a 4.5 millimeter hook, all right? However, you can use whatever yarn and hook size you want. This would make a wonderful, pot holder if you're using cotton and it would also make a um, wonderful blanket you know th there's just so many things you can do with this so the yarn weight isn't going to matter that much I would just say not to use chunky weight because this is a very delicate stitch um, basically don't use any stitch that you wouldn't use for a star stitch okay and um if you don't know what a star stitch is don't worry about it it's it's just a stitch where you pull up a bunch of loops and then you pull through the loops and it's similar in that this stitch is is similar to that now this stitch is considered an advanced stitch however if you're a beginner you can absolutely do this it is very easy to learn you just have to be able to be patient and um, be willing to um, focus until you get it down and once you get it down it is just muscle memory and you can absolutely learn this as a beginner okay so the only other thing that i can think of is that this is a yarn eater so if you were planning a project with this stitch i would say to get the amount of yarn that you would normally get for that project and then add on anywhere between a fourth to a third um, more fabric so that you can make this as long as you want it um, or as wide as you want it. As far as the weight of yarn that I suggest using, um, I've just found that weight three works really well for this yarn. I think that, or for this pattern, I think that um, size four would be fine too. Um, size five might be getting a little bit too thick just because and when you learn the this stitch you'll see that it is something that you wouldn't want to use too much bulk on it i'm not saying not to use a five weight i'm just saying that it might be more challenging to learn using a five weight i would suggest sticking with either a three or a four weight all right that said let's learn this stitch um we begin with a slip knot okay and we chain a multiple of two so I'm going to chain 20 stitches off camera, but um, for those of you who are just beginning, I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see how to chain. You put that slip knot around your hook, okay? And then you pull that loop through and there's one chain. And then you pull it through again, there's two, three. All right, and then you're gonna wanna hold on to that because it gives you a little bit more tension here four and five and you're going to just keep doing that until you reach the stitch multiple um, that you want to do your swatch up in um, again i'm going to be doing 20 so i will see you once i have 20 stitches 
All right, welcome back. I've zoomed out a little bit so you can see that I have 20 stitches now, and this is what I'm going to use to um, show you how to make this feather stitch. Now, in my fall foliage um, scarf, I chained 32, just so you know, in case you want to um, get that exact. And I'm going to try, yeah, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more so you can see exactly how to make this. So the first row is going to be half double crochets, okay? This is a foundation row. You don't reach the repeat row until row three. But once you reach row three, that's what you're going to be repeating over and over again. And I'll go over row three several times so you guys can feel confident that you have it down. Um, just because I know that I'm working with some beginners here too, and I want to make sure you guys know exactly what you're doing. I want to identify which chain you're going to half double crochet into when you do that first half, half double crochet. You are going to chain into, or you're going to half double crochet into the second loop from the hook. So you don't count the loop on your hook. That's the first loop from your hook, and this is the second. So right here where my darning needle is, um, that is where you are going to make the first half double crochet. You make the half double crochet by yarning over, putting your hook through that loop and pulling up a loop. You've got three loops on your hook and then you pull a loop through all three. And now you're going to go into the very next stitch and you are going to half double crochet into that one as well. And again, you just yarn over. You put your crochet hook through the very next stitch, pull up a loop, and pull that loop through all three loops. I'm going to show you one more time. Yarn over, put your hook through the next stitch, pull up a loop, and then pull a loop through all three. And you just do this all the way across until you come to the end, and I will meet you back right there. Okay? All right, guys, welcome back. I have I have half double to cro crocheted across and half double crocheted into that very last stitch. Okay, and this is what it looks like so far. I am zoomed in quite a bit, so in you know, given the weight of this yarn, I want you to be able to see how small this is in comparison to like my fingers, and you, you know, you probably know the size of um, this crochet hook or these scissors, for example, so that you know um, that this isn't necessarily as large as it looks when I'm zoomed in. I don't know why, I just feel like that's important to show you. So the next step is this second row. Now the second row is also part of the foundation. So you're going to be using the second row to build up your foundation. And then the third row is going to be the pattern repeat. So you're going to chain one, and turn okay so the first thing that you do is you half double crochet into the first stitch okay and just to identify the first stitch that's right here okay all right let me just make sure you guys can see that yeah right there so we're gonna yarn over put our, put our um, crochet hook underneath that stitch, the one that we just made actually. Okay. Pull up a loop. We've got three loops on our hook. Then pull a loop through again. And now what we're going to do is we're going to um, chain one. We're going to skip this next stitch and we're going to half double crochet into the, the next stitch after that. Okay. Next, we're going to chain one again. Okay, we're going to skip this next stitch, and then the one after that, we're going to half double crochet. All right, so you continue this pattern of chaining one, skipping one, then half double crocheting into the next. Okay, when you're done with your half double crochet, you chain one. You skip one and you have to double crochet into the next. All right, and you're going to do this across the entire row until you come to that very last. So this is what your row should start looking like. Okay, so I'm going to do that to the end and I will meet you back next and we can go over how to make this feather stitch. All right. Hi there, I'm almost done with this. 
I have made my second to last half double crochet. I've chained one and I'm going to half double crochet into that very last stitch. And now I am done with row two. All right. So that's what it should be looking like right there. So now this row right here is the third row and it is going to be our pattern repeat. However, it's going to be a little, it's going to, it might take you a little while to identify the next row without these very clear chain spaces here. So just stick with me at least until, um, the, through the fourth row. Okay. I'm going to be doing more than just the fourth row with you guys, but I want you to, um, stay with me at least through that. Okay. And just so you guys can make sure you have it down. So row three, you, um, you chain one, which I already did chained one. Okay. Now you have double crochet in the very first stitch and you're always going to have double crochet in the very sti first stitch when you start a row. Okay. So that first stitch, let me go ahead and use my um, needle as a pointer. That first stitch is right here. Okay. So chain run yarn over half double crochet by putting that hook underneath that first stitch pulling up a loop. You've got three loops on your hook and then pulling through all three. Okay. Next you are going to, um, <laughs> okay. So you have one loop on your hook, right? You're going to yarn over and you're going to put your hook through this hole underneath here. Okay. Let me make sure I'm holding this right. You are going to yarn over. You're going to put your, your hook underneath this hole, you're going to pull up a loop. Okay. So that's three loops on your hook. All right. Next, you're going to yarn over again. And this time you're going to go underneath that stitch right here. And you're going to pull up a loop. Okay. So now you have five loops on your hook. Okay. Next, you're going to yarn over you're going to go through the next space and pull up a loop. So now you have seven loops on your hook. Next, you're going to pull another loop through all seven of those loops. And how you do this is when you're pulling up your loops, first off, make sure that they're going all the way up so that they're all even with each other. Second, when you pull that, that next loop through, turn your hook, so it's facing down so that hook won't catch on any of these, any of these loops that you have on your hook. So we're going to go ahead and pull that through all seven loops like that. And then we are going to chain one. So this is the point where I want to point out how it's similar to the star stitch. If you look at this stitch right here, and then you look at a star stitch, you can see that this really does look like half of that star stitch as a star stitch is basically, um, loops that kind of go around and form a star. Um, however, this stitch is called the feather stitch and you don't ever complete that. Okay. Um, and let me go ahead and show you again to refresh your memory and I'm going to just put it on the same color, um, how that ends up looking. Okay. So you make this, but you don't ever complete it. Okay. So that's how that looks. So we've got the first part of that beautiful feather stitch. We've finished pulling through the loop and then we chained one. Now what we're going to do is we're going to yarn over and we're going to repeat what we just did. Okay. So we go back into that last place that we worked into. Okay. And we've go underneath and we pull up a loop. Okay. So we've got three loops on our hook. Then we yarn over and we go underneath that stitch that's right underneath that, that hole right there. Okay. We go underneath that stitch and then we pull up another loop. Okay. Five loops on your hook. Then you yarn over and you go into that hole. It is the next skip stitch from the previous row. 
Now you have seven loops on your hook. The next thing you do is you pull a loop through all seven hooks. Or I'm sorry, <laughs> pull a loop through all seven loops <laughs> that are on your hook. Okay. And then you finish it off by chaining one. Okay. Let's do this one more time. Yarn over. Put your crochet hook underneath the same space that you ended that in. Yarn over. Put your crochet hook underneath there. Pull up a loop. You've got three loops. Yarn over. Go underneath that, that space. And you pull up a loop. You've got five loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over. And you go on into the next skip space. And you pull up a loop. Got seven loops. Now we're going to pull another loop through all seven of those. Okay. And then we're going to chain one. And if you look real closely, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in if I can. <laughs> all right. So if you look real closely, you're making this beautiful. Um, this is called a feather stitch, but I think it looks more like falling leaves. Okay. So I'm going to zoom out. And if you guys want to, to continue watching me do this, I'm going to go ahead and do this for the rest of the row because I want to make sure that you guys see an illustration of what this is supposed to look like. However, if you want to fast forward and get to the next row, I'll go ahead and put my work down like this at the end of that so you'll be able to know when to stop. All right. So here we go. We're going to yarn over, go back into that loop that we just finished that first or that last um, stitch into. We're going to go underneath that and pull up a loop. We've got three loops on our hook. And you don't, you don't have to worry about pulling it too high. Just, you can pull it as high as you want so that you get some, you know, you get some space. All right. Yarn over, go underneath. Okay. So you're going to go into this place right here. Okay, you're going to go underneath that stitch where where you've got that hole there. And you're going to put your crochet hook under there and then you're going to pull up another loop. Okay, got five. You're going to yarn over and you're going to go into the next skip space right there from before. Pull up another loop. You've got seven. You hook a loop on there and you pull through all seven loops, and then you chain one. And we're going to do that again. Yarn over, go into there. Okay. Three. We go underneath there. Five. Go underneath the next one. Seven. We pull through and we chain one. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and let you watch me do this at the pace that I feel most comfortable with here so that you can see what that looks like. This is actually still slower than what I would normally do. because so I want to make sure you can see where I'm going here. Okay. Okay. If you don't want to think of it as counting seven loops, you can think about it as counting that pattern three times. Okay. And I'll show you how right here. So you yarn over, you go in once. So you've got one yarn over, go in another time. That's two. All right. Yarn over and go in that third time right here. Sorry. <laughs> right here. Okay. And that's three. All right. And then you pull through all seven of those right there. Okay. Then you chain one. Next, 
the very beginning stitch and the very end stitch is always going to be a half double crochet. All right, guys. So when you come to the end of that third row, you are going to, after you chain one, you're going to half double crochet into that last stitch. Okay. Because our beginning and our ending stitches is always going to be a half double crochet. Now you're going to chain one and turn. Okay. So we've got the beginning of this stitch here. And that last row was very easy because you could tell exactly where to go in um, because it was very obvious. Now that, that um, the places you go into aren't going to be as obvious, but you'll start picking it up very easily because they're basically the only places you can go into. So you're going to go in here and here. So you're going to go here, here, and here. Then you're going to go back into here, here, and here. Then you're going to go back into here, here, and here. And, and you can watch me do this with you. But let's go ahead and start with the first stitch, which is very important, which is a half double crochet into that first stitch. Okay. And we are going to chain one. Okay. And then after that first stitch, we chain one. Next, you're going to yarn over and you're going to do the feather stitch pattern. Again, you go into this right here in between that first half double crochet and um, your first stitch there. Then you're going to yarn over and you're going to go underneath right here in this, this hole right here. Okay, pull up a loop, five, and you're going to go in right here too. And, but, and it's basically you're going in underneath that chain space that you made um, after you did the stitch each time. Okay, so you've got seven stitches on your hook and then you pull through all seven. Then you chain. And for those of you who um, fast forwarded, I was telling um, the people who had st stuck with me that what you're doing is that you are, you, if you don't want to think about it as seven loops, think of it as doing something t three times. So we go back into that hole that we just finished that last stitch into. So that's one. Okay. Then we go back underneath that right there. So that's two. All right. Then we go into the next hole right there. So that's three. So um, if you don't want to count the seven loops, then you can just count that you did that three times. Pull through and chain one. Okay. You go back into that last space that you did it. Then you go underneath there. And again, there should be a pretty clear space to go into, okay? Um, and you go into the next one. And that space you can find because that is just where you do, after you complete your stitch, you chain one like this, okay? And that is always going to be the stitch that you go under for the next row, all right? So we're going to do this again. So now I'm going to go ahead and just zoom in a little bit more so you guys can see that stitch definition there. All right. So you've got the leaves going this way on that, that row. And now they're going this way on this row. And if you turn it, it's doing the same thing here. All right. So that's the way it looks on that side. And this is the way it looks on this side. All right. Just wanted to make sure you could see that. Now I'm going to actually zoom out more than I was before because I want to um, show you what it looks like when you're doing it um, a little bit faster. Okay. So again, yarn over, you've got one, you've got two, then you've got your third one right there. You pull through all of them and then you chain one. One, two, 
three, pull through all of them, chain one. You know, um, I, I feel like I need to still keep it pretty slow for you guys so you can see very clearly where that, that hook is going into. If you've already gotten it, that's awesome. Um, just want to make sure everybody is on board. I want everybody who wants to learn this stitch to be able to follow clearly exactly what's going on here. Okay. And for me, it just took me a few rows before I could figure out exactly what, exactly where that hook was supposed to go. And basically when you're looking for those places to place your hook through, um, they'll reveal themselves to you. At least that's, <laughs> that's been my experience. Okay. Okay. So you go into that one, go underneath there, right there. Very obvious place to put it. And then you go into that very last one. And that is how you know you're at your last stitch. You have just put that last stitch into that last hole there. You can't go anymore. So then you chain one and then you make a half double crochet until that into that end stitch because that's how we always end. That's how we always begin each row. And as you can see here, since I don't color block, I change colors here. All right. So I'm just going, I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through this stitch one more time. In fact, I'm even going, um, yeah, I, I think that's about enough room for you guys to see it. So I just want to make sure that you guys get it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain one. And I'm going to do the half double crochet in that very first stitch. All right. Just getting some more slack here. I'm going to do that half double crochet into the very first stitch. Right. And then I'm going to do that feather stitch all the way across. And in the very last stitch, I do the half double crochet again. And that is the repeat. All right. So let me make sure I'm going to see if I can get this light just a little bit closer. I don't know if that did anything, but just wanting to make sure you can see. All right, I'm going to half double crochet into this first stitch right here. Okay. And, um, you know, I'm, I just realized, you know, I'm working with this three weight yarn. It might be a little bit difficult to, to learn this stitch with three weight yarn because it's, there's a little less to hold on to. So I might say if, I mean, I would say that if you are getting frustrated working with three weight yarn at this point, then you might want to try four weight yarn to learn this stitch. Um, so keep that in mind. All right. So I made that first half double crochet into that first stitch and then I chained one. Okay. Now I'm going to go, now I'm going to go into this one and then I'm going to go into this one. Okay. One, two, and then three into that one. And that's how I'm going to make those seven loops. that will end up on my hook at the end. Okay, you can pull them all up so that you can make sure you can loop through all of them. You can pull that last loop through all of them. You pull it through. Again, you can just turn your hook down so it won't snag on any of those loops. And you will find that you eventually, after practicing a few times, you can pull it through those loops pretty easily. Now at the end, when you're done with your scarf or your, your project, and it's the length that you want, if you are making this as a scarf, you can always add tassels for that definition. But this is one of those, um, stitches that really doesn't need anything extra. At least that's what I think. So I would suggest just leaving it. Um, but if you're the kind of person that likes tassels, then go for it. Completely go for it. Um, I also wanted to let you guys know that once I finish that scarf and it might be a while because I've kind of put it, put it off since we're in spring now in the Northern hemisphere and it, you know, it, and I don't really, um, need to finish that until later on this summer for the fall. Um, 
It might not come until later on, but I would like to make a feather stitch hat that goes along with this. And if I do, I will definitely share that with the channel as well. So hopefully you feel pretty confident in this stitch. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit further so you guys can see a little bit more of how I'm making this stitch. And just so you know, that's my scissors right there. And this is my little darning needle. They were already on my table. All right. And you can absolutely use a bigger, bigger hook if you want to. This is just the hook that feels the best for this particular yarn. Okay. This is typically more what you would see if you were watching me and I didn't realize I was on camera. Of course, I'm still going a little bit slower than I normally would because I'm very aware that you guys are watching me. Okay. Now, one thing I can also say about this is if you can do the star stitch, you can definitely do this. Um, <laughs> and the reason I say that is that even though I can do this stitch, I still struggle with the star stitch, but here's my struggle. My struggle isn't so much with the, you know, where to, where I put all of those loops in and all of that. My struggle is actually with, um, I don't know what the second, I, it's a two row repeat rather than a one row repeat. And I don't ever know what I'm supposed to be doing on that second row. Like some people do half double crochets, but some people do single crochets and I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. So if anybody wants to point me towards a very clear, I mean, very clear from beginning to end, um, star stitch tutorial, I don't care if it's in us terms or UK terms. Um, I would be totally up for learning that. Okay. So we're at the end. We can't, we can't make another feather, right? So what we're going to do is we've already, we've already chained one and we are going to put that half double crochet into that very, very last stitch there. And I know it might look a little empty, but once you turn around, you're going to put another half double crochet in there, right? Okay. You'll chain one and then you're going to go right back underneath there. So you'll fill up that space with your first feather stitch of the next row. All right. So that's how we fill that up and that's how that doesn't end up looking like a big hole. <laughs> so I just wanted to show that to you guys, make sure you got this down. So hopefully, you feel very, very positive about this stitch. Um, again, I just want to point out that on when you look at both sides, you'll see if you look closely and I'll, I'll just zoom in so you can see it here. You will see that some of them are going this way. Okay. And some of them appear to be going this way and that's just the way the stitch works up. Okay. And it's going to look the same on the other side too. So that's another thing that kind of creates that cool definition there. And again, on this side, you've got these that look like they're going this way and these that look like they're going that way. That's going to continue on up. This is a gorgeous stitch to use. If you are making something that is Celtic theme, it also looks really good there because it looks kind of braided as well. And I didn't mention that at the beginning, but that is something else to kind of keep in mind when you're making this stitch. I am so happy that I was able to share this with you. I know a lot of you guys really wanted me to put it up. So here is your feather stitch tutorial. Again, I'm going to be calling this my fall foliage scarf. So I'm going to be titling it this. Okay. But this is called the feather stitch. I think it looks like leaves. So I call it like in my mind. And when I'm talking to other people that are like my friends and I'm not worrying about terminology, I call it the leaf stitch. <laughs> um, but this is the feather stitch. It's absolutely gorgeous and it can really make something that looks really special and it is special. It's really, really great. Um, I highly recommend this. And, and if you, I mean, if you are an advanced, um, crocheter, it's, it's just great to know it. If you're a beginner, 
it really isn't as hard as it might seem to learn it. It is just learning how to pull that loop through seven other loops that are already on your hook. I know that that can seem really daunting, but you can totally do it. The trick that I use is to make sure that those loops are, are um, big enough, you know, by pulling them up, almost even exaggerating how, how tall I pull them up. And then when you pull that loop through, you turn your crochet hook as you pull, pull it through all seven. And that's all you need to know in order to make that feather stitch. I really hope this was clear. Please give me some feedback. Let me know in the comments if um, this was a clear tutorial to you. Um, if there's anything that I did or said in this tutorial that was unclear, let me know and I'll just go ahead and make a follow-up video making sure that everything is very cl clear to you guys because this is this is too pretty a stitch to do a tutorial on and then end up not being clear enough for you guys all right um so please let me know um i'd be happy to um try showing this to you again if i haven't been clear in this video but hopefully i have been i've tried to be mindful of every single element of this stitch that might cause um, a question. <laughs> All right, guys. So thank you so much for watching to the end. Be sure to um, look at my channel for giveaways because I always have a giveaway going right, right now, you know. And also make sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell because you're going to want to be notified for my next giveaway. I'm going to be posting it next week. So we'll have another giveaway with a whole bunch of really nice items in it. And I look forward to seeing you on Granny Square Sunday with our Granny Square tutorial for the week. We'll see you then. <laughs> Bye.